Window World is proud to present Kevin Keatsman Has Issues. Simply the best for less at windowskansascity.com. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is better than the Baseball Hall of Fame. There, I said it. Almost nobody in sports media would agree with me, and baseball purists would cut me out of their life altogether just for saying it. But it's true. The Football Hall acknowledges and celebrates that it's a hall of fame, not a hall of statistics. We have several great stories to share surrounding the Hall of Fame game Thursday night that prove this point. At the same time, we ask, which current Chiefs will be in the Hall of Fame? I have four locks, three probablys, and a couple maybes for you. See, isn't that more fun than having people tell you Salvador Perez will never make the Baseball Hall of Fame and the Royals will always just have one player in? Makes my point for me. Soccer star Carly Lloyd was the best player on America's bronze medal winning team, And she did the hardest thing of any American athlete in Tokyo. She is brave. She is bold. She is a tremendous talent. And she's clearly her own person. Isn't that how we celebrate girl power in sports? But the libs are just destroying her right now. You'll want to hear this story. Add Congresswoman Sharice Davids to the list of Dems that are in hot water, running away from policies they support. Davids has been outed by national media outlets and the Republican Congressional Committee for being a far-left radical in her support of teaching critical race theory. Will her opponent next year go on the negative attack? If Amanda Atkins does, she will win. United Airlines is requiring all 67,000 employees to get vaccinated. There is more to this story. And a photo is released of embattled Governor Andrew Cuomo Thursday that's beyond belief in stupidity. He's working poolside. Just he and his barefoot secretary, Wearing a summer romper. Unbelievable. Brought to you by Roberts Robinson, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Excelsior Springs. It's a great weekend to get out to Roberts Robinson and Excelsior. Check out their Silverados and GMC Sierras. Also the great line of Buick SUVs. The entire inventory is online at robertsrobinson.com. They've got some cars in now. The, The inventory is growing again. And so they have cars that you can trade in and you'll get more for your trade in right now than you've ever gotten, you can never even imagine. They'll even just buy your car if you don't want to get another car. A lot of people are selling uh, families with two cars. They're saying, you know, let's go get the money. Let's sell this car and get by with one for a while and take the money because the money is so good. And Roberts Robinson will pay you top dollar in Excelsior Springs. They'll also, if you get on the phone with them or online, build your car for you. They'll walk you through the entire process. They'll get you every possible discount like they did for me, everything you're eligible for, sell it to you for less, order it from the factory. When it's in, You can pick it up at the showroom or they'll deliver it right to your home no matter where you live. It's Roberts Robinson, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Excelsior Springs. They do try harder, and their customers say, we just make it easy. Online at robertsrobinson.com. Mark Lindquist and his team at 360 Document Solutions. Online at 360documentsolutions.com. Any business in western Missouri or anywhere in the entire state of Kansas can benefit from doing business with 360. Here's what they do. They basically do a complete analysis of all your doc technology and IT programs at work. They review your current costs. They get you out of your current lease. They get you into something that is more efficient, more productive, and costs less. That's a win all the way around. And know who you're doing business with. These are great patriots at 360. They love America. Give them a call. They can help your office as well. 913-745-5344. Online at 360documentsolutions.com. Elite Automation, make your building great again with Elite Automation. They specialize in retrofitting HVAC control systems for maximum comfort and savings. Basically, what they do is they will build you a a whole new control system for the HVAC you already have in place. And if your building's big enough, it can save you thousands of dollars a month. What's your building costing you? Ask yourself that. What if you could lower your energy costs by 20%? What if you could lower them by 40%? How much would your business be saving? Elite Automation can help. They can also simply do consulting at no cost to you. If they come consult for your business and help you save money, you share what you save with them. Online at EliteAutomate.com or call 913-766-2188. And Dr. Troy Burns and his team of physicians at Pro Partners Healthcare, Leewood and the Northland, direct primary care, guaranteeing you fast access to your doctor. Think of it as a concierge service. You got a problem, you call your doctor up. This is not you know, call one of these big corporate entities or your insurance company and wait in line and get put in the queue and we'll call you back in 37 minutes and we'll schedule you 
for an appointment three weeks from now. This is direct access to your doctor. This is the way to do it. This is the way you want to do it. ProPartnersHealthcare.com is the website if you want to learn more about Dr. Troy Burns and his unique care for Kansas City families. Online at ProPartnersHealthcare.com. I thought the Hall of Fame thing was fun. I think it's cool who they honor and the diversity of people that get into the Football Hall of Fame. And football is back. So we're going to talk about it right now on KKHI. Hit it. Sports, politics, life, Amazing Garage Floors presents Kevin Keatsman Has Issues online at AmazingGarageFloors.net. First night of football and the action on the field wasn't necessarily great, and none of the star players really participated in the game between the Cowboys and the Steelers, which the Steelers won, but the broadcast itself was pretty darn entertaining because the NFL just knows how to present entertainment to Americans. It really does, and it's generational at this point, and watching the two classes of the Hall basically be announced at the same time Because the pandemic last year, the 2020 class was sort of skipped over, so they're doing that Saturday night. The 2021 class will be Sunday night. Huge names, big-time stars in this thing, Peyton Manning and others. But what I love about the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and the reason that, and this is controversial with most people, the reason that I believe it is better than the Baseball Hall of Fame is it is not so set in stone that it's just about statistics. It's just about longevity and records, and marks, and things of that nature. There is a a real nod, a tip of the cap, an appreciation for contribution to the game and building the game. And I think the core of where this comes from, and one of the things that I love about football, and a common theme here on this podcast, is we love winners. We love things that are built. We love things that uh, underdogs that overcome. And that truly is professional football. College football was far more popular than professional football when it started. Baseball, boxing, horse racing, all kinds of sports in America were once upon a time much more popular than pro football. There is still an appreciation within the sport in the NFL. And we may not like like exactly what it looks like in 2021 publicly, with all the wokeness and the COVID tests and the things that they try to do, the social justice and the money that they donate. But you cannot argue the stature of this league and what it's overcome and what it's done and how it got where it is. It was tremendous work and effort. The Dallas Cowboys are now the most expensive franchise in the world. They're valued at $6.5 billion. I mean, these are insanely uh, expensive operations and of great worth, obviously. The National Football League every year when they go through the, the Hall of Fame, and if you really love the league and you've enjoyed football, and I, I don't, you know, I was no pioneer. I'm not old enough to be a pro football pioneer. This would be, you know, people in the 50s and 60s pre-Super Bowl era that loved pro football and said, listen, this can be better. We can really make something of this. The the Fools Club, the the uh, the foolish club that Lamar Hunt started, and the AFL challenging the NFL, saying this should be better, and then the invention of the Super Bowl 50 years ago. All those things were way before my time, but I grew up watching football with my dad. Um, Baseball was our sport. We loved baseball. We all played baseball. We didn't really have football players in the family. I played for a few years. I wasn't very good. I was very small and undersized for my age, which suited me to playing baseball, but did not help me much playing football, especially as you got into high school and guys were just bigger and stronger and all those things. But football was a gathering place for our family. It was really the only day my dad didn't work. He didn't work on Sundays. We would go to church, we would watch football, and he would go to games. He took my brother, who's seven years older than me, to a lot of games through the years. That sort of, I won't say it went away, but they didn't go as much as time went on. When the television age entered, which which really, these games were televised before the 80s, but the late 70s and into the 80s, and then the advent of cable television and whatnot, television, media, entertainment just exploded nationally in America, in a wide variety of ways. And the NFL was right there capitalizing on it with NFL films and Monday night football being invented in the 70s and the halftime highlights and, and, you know, the promotion of everything league. It was always league over team. And you could sort of feel that. And the NFL has always known that. They've always appreciated that. 
It does not bother them. It doesn't bother anybody really in the league that the the biggest star in the NFL is in Kansas City. In other leagues, they want LeBron James in Los Angeles. They don't want him in Cleveland. They liked him in Miami. There, there's places that you like your stars. The MVP last year plays football in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And the Packers are a thing. They're a big thing. Truly, every team in the NFL is a big thing. They just have to get good. You become a big thing if you are good. The Cleveland Browns are there now. The Browns have been this, this forgotten franchise that moved and then started up again and never won anything. But the Browns are a thing. And we respect the history of the Browns and the Browns fans and what they've been through. And so football is just different. What I think it stems from is the fact that football overcame. It was not always America's favorite sport. It was not always big number one. And it's big number one by a growing margin. Even though network television may be shrinking and streaming has come along and digital platforms and all these other things, the NFL just continues to pull away from everyone else uh, when it comes to sport, professional sports entertainment. The next closest thing really is MMA or UFC, what Dana White is doing. It's growing leaps and bounds. What we're talking about is conservative fan bases. The National Football League is based with conservative fans. There are plenty, there are millions of liberals that watch pro football, but they don't have the profound respect for the game that conservatives do. The, the machismo that's, a, that's part of this sport, the, the toughness, the understanding that a long career in the NFL is five years, that is, the, you know, quarterbacks and kickers are the exception, that they're around forever is amazing. Watching these ceremonies in this broadcast last night, and they're bringing on all these different people, and they're showing about the past. And, of course, your great superstars are there. Peyton Manning is going into the Hall of Fame, a, a tremendous superstar, a generational talent who, had he had better coaches and been on better teams, may have rivaled what Tom Brady – in fact, he look, I think Peyton Manning was a better quarterback than Tom Brady. I think if Peyton Manning was in New England, it would have been even greater – than Tom Brady. That's just a personal opinion from watching him play. We don't know what Patrick Mahomes' career looks like. We don't know what happens after Andy Reid retires. Andy could have a health issue now and have one year left in him. It's, po it's always possible. We don't know what the next coach would be. We don't know what the next level of talent will be after Hill and Kelsey are gone. There's no way to tell. I think Patrick Mahomes is going to win more than one Super Bowl. I do. I think that's a reasonable expectation. But what Tom Brady had with Bill Belichick and what he's had in his career is, is exceptional. And what they had around them and the defenses that went out there and performed for him and stopped the opponents. Not just in the playoffs, but in almost every Super Bowl Brady played, the defense was the star of the game. It was the star of the game last year against the Chiefs. No question defense played a huge factor. It played a huge factor for, for Peyton Manning in his second Super Bowl win in Denver. That was a great defensive team and an okay offensive team. That's fine, but there's no way to know. You know, you see these generational talents. You know somebody's good enough to be in the Hall of Fame and who's not. But there is also in the Football Hall of Fame something that baseball doesn't do, and I don't understand why baseball doesn't do it. There is a complete appreciation for people who have impacted professional football in a meaningful way. And there were some examples of this last night. Jimmy Johnson was the coach of the Cowboys. He only coached there five years. They were 1-15 when he took over. He went and took them to the Super Bowl, and he is now in the Hall of Fame. It's much more than just his years as the head coach. He was a college coach as well, successful college coach. He's been a longtime broadcaster. He's one of the characters of the game. People know He's as famous as anybody in the NFL right now. And the Pro Football Hall of Fame recognizes that, that his contributions to pro football mean Jimmy Johnson belongs here. Even though he didn't coach for 30 years or anything like that, he belongs here. Jimmy Johnson is not in the Cowboys' ring of honor, and he's going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That never happens in baseball. Another Cowboy, Drew Pearson, was featured prominently last night. He has not played a football game since 1983, for crying out loud. This is the era of football when I fell in love with the game. They were really starting to throw the ball in the 80s. It became an aerial game. It went from you know, 12 or 14 passes a game 
to some crazy Dan Fouts and Dan Marino games where they maybe threw it 28 or 30 times. And it was fun. And that's when I started. The 80s is where I started becoming more of a football fan than a baseball fan. Not completely because the Royals were good. I was a good baseball player. It didn't happen, but it was. It clearly was changing the 80s. And this is where football changed. And you look back at a player like Drew Pearson, who Roger Staubach threw passes to, and his stats don't add up today. You cannot compare Drew Pearson's stats to what Tyreek Hill is doing. It's an unfair comparison. You can't do it. But Drew Pearson was a player everybody knew. Drew Pearson caught the first Hail Mary pass ever. It was named after that. Here's a nod to this man who had an outstanding nine-year career and has been a model citizen and a, a, a really great ambassador for the NFL since 1983. And we're putting him in the Hall of Fame. And I think that's wonderful. Roger Staubach is going to introduce him and present him at the Hall of Fame. A scout for the Steelers that I'd never heard of until last night. His name was Bill Nunn. Way back in the day, in the 60s, they showed pictures of him in like the war room where they're in there talking about talent. And he's smoking a cigarette and everybody in there has cigars and there's smoke-filled room. And this is a black man working for the Steelers in the front office as a scout. And his job was to go to the historically black colleges and universities and find talent that you didn't see at Notre Dame or USC. And he would go find it. And the Steelers capitalized on that. And he was a rock star for them. And I didn't know his story before last night. And he's going into the Hall of Fame. That is someone who contributed to football. But my favorite of the night was Duke Slater. I'd never heard of Duke Slater. Duke Slater played tackle for the Milwaukee Badgers and the Chicago Cardinals a hundred years ago. Duke Slater was the first black lineman in pro football. He got his law degree after attending the University of Iowa. He played professional football for the Badgers and the Cardinals for many years. And upon completion of that, he became a lawyer after getting his law degree and became a judge in Chicago, in Illinois. And I find stories like this amazing because this man graduated college as a black man from Iowa. This is some of the history of this country that we never pay attention to. You know, it's, all, it's always the negative. This, man, this black man graduated college and became a lawyer before my dad was born. My dad was born in 1927. He never had a chance to go to college. He, he was working on the farm, and he went straight to construction from the farm and high school to work in construction. There wasn't Pell Grants available then. There was really no avenue for him to go to college and try to be something else. I guess he could have worked his way through. He could have found a way. He did the only thing he knew to do. He went to work. He got a job. He joined a union, and he started working. And he raised a family and four wonderful children and was a loving dad and a wonderful provider. But we forget that even 100 years ago, there were opportunities. There were opportunities for people to do things and to be exceptional in this country. And the paths chosen and the, and the road you take defines who you are. In the National Football League or the Pro Football Hall of Fame, introducing me to Duke Slater last night was an absolute thrill. A black man, the first black lineman in professional football, became a lawyer and a judge he had a law degree over 100 years ago. And we're sitting here 100 years later saying that you can't be black and do anything in America. You cannot succeed. You cannot do well. I'm telling you, at the core of the National Football League, at the inner core of professional football, is a powerful thread of conservatism and American pride. Why this league in 2021 wants to publicly be woke is beyond me. It is nothing more than appeasing players. It is not for the fan base. It is not for television ratings. It's not for money. It is nothing more than appeasing players. That has not worked for the NBA. I believe the NFL needs to be very careful on these things because they have built a brand. They have built America's favorite sport. They have built America's easily top sports entertainment business. In franchises, every club is worth over a billion dollars. Insane what these clubs are worth. Why or how they would want to jeopardize that is something I can't comprehend. But I did love the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame game. 
not necessarily the game on the field, but watching these players, knowing what they've been through. And I started asking myself, which current Chiefs are going to make the Hall of Fame? And I'll take all the emails you want to send on this one if you want to nominate them up. This was an incomplete list. I didn't spend a lot of time on this. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, and Clark Hunt are locks. Absolute dead locks. As far as I'm concerned, they've all made it. I- including Mahomes. I mean, I, I he's, he's in. He's made it. I think Tyree Kill, Tyron Matthew, and Chris Jones will make it. I think. Eric Fisher had a great shot, but injuries will probably keep him out, and he's no longer with the Chiefs. That's obviously problematic. Kareem Hunt, had he not run afoul here and gotten in trouble with the Chiefs, would have been in because he's a tremendous player, and he would have been known as the running back from these teams that went to -to back-to-back and maybe more Super Bowls. I am open to the possibility there are other players on this team, other staff, other personnel, maybe Brett Veach eventually. Who knows? He's a very young guy. He will always be remembered as the person who, well, you can't say found Patrick Mahomes. He was playing in the Big 12, and he was drafted 10th overall. So it's not like you discovered him or found him. But the one who saw in him that he should have been the first pick in the draft, not the 10th, maybe. These are all possibilities. I just think it's interesting to think about, and that's years down the road, but not that many years. I mean, there's a possibility Travis Kelsey plays, you know, two more seasons. I think he'll play more than that, but, you know, there's a chance that Travis Kelsey only played like two more years or three more years, which means five years after that, he's in. I think five years after Andy Reid retires, he's in. I think Clark Hunt will be an old man before he's in. And I think Mahomes will be in uh, five years after he's done, no doubt. But I think Matt, Tyron Matthew, Tyree Kill, and Chris Jones have a great chance. And maybe some others. Maybe some others. Interesting thing to think about. I'm just glad football is back. We don't get any more action for a week. Everybody in the league begins their three exhibition games next week. These two teams that played on Thursday night get four exhibition games and uh, the, because of the Hall of Fame game, basically. But I just... I go round and round arguing with baseball fans and or, or or baseball Hall of Fame media people. Most of them are liberal, and they love the fact that it's harder to get into the baseball hall. That's a wonderful argument. That's a wonderful argument. I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the argument that, oh, it's harder to get in the baseball Hall of Fame. It is harder to get in the baseball Hall of Fame. I appreciate that. But to me, a Hall of Fame is not the, you know, fame is a, a very broad definition, a very broad word. And if you were famous playing your sport and you really contributed to the popularity and success of that sport, that's where you belong. It doesn't mean you're all equal. It doesn't mean we're only taking, you know, a certain number of pitchers. If somebody was a great contributor and created to the uh, popularity for the sport in any way, I think they belong in a hall of fame. Because that's what they're called is a hall of fame. And I think the Pro Football Hall of Fame really gets it. And I thought that was on full display uh, to start this season. I can't wait for football season. I can't wait. Chiefs are going to be good. It's so much fun with Mahomes as the quarterback and knowing that the team is good every year. And they're not just good, they're entertaining. They don't go out there and win with defense. You know, I, look, I want them to have a great defense. Defense is key. It's a huge part, no question. But the Chiefs don't go out and win 13-10 to 10 every week. They go out and entertain you. It's just so much fun. I can't wait. There's also a video circulating right now from training camp in Wisconsin with Aaron Rodgers that is more than fun. It's a drill. They have a basket down in the back end of the end zone where you throw a deep ball to a receiver, almost like a Hail Mary throw. It's not a Hail Mary throw. It's it's assuming he's open, but it's right back on the end zone line. Like, only he can catch it and the defender can't, right? Aaron Rodgers drops back, takes a couple of steps back, and flicks that he has the most beautiful pass in the game. The, the little the little flick thing that he puts air under is just gorgeous. And the way that the point of the ball just perfectly turns over and comes down, it's a thing of beauty. And they're just running drills in front of all these people. The fans are there watching. And he drops back 40 yards and throws that thing in a bucket <laughs> in the corner of the end zone. It's spectacular. Quarterbacks are fun. Quarterbacks are are stars, man. They're stars. They're absolutely famous. And a lot of people will tell you that Philip Rivers belongs in the Hall of Fame. Philip Rivers is retired this year, right? 
Uh, he played a long time, and he racked up a lot of stats. I don't know that he contributed something unique to the game that other quarterbacks didn't, and he didn't win. So for me, Phillip Rivers is not a Hall of Famer. I think he will be in the Hall of Fame. I don't think he'll go first ballot or anything like that, but I think Phillip Rivers will be in the Hall of Fame based specifically on longevity and statistics. And it, it's almost like a baseball guy. It, okay, there's a lot of people in the Baseball Hall of Fame that play a long time, rack up stats, didn't win anything, and they get in. That's Phillip Rivers. Now, I'll listen to that argument. To me, Hall of Fame quarterbacks are a different category. They're just a different category. And so he is not a Hall of Famer by, I would vote no for now. There may be a point in time where his contributions to the game are greater. I think he'd be a tremendous announcer. He says he wants to coach his kids right now, so he's not getting really into broadcasting. I think he'd be so much better than Troy Aikman. You couldn't even believe it. He's really entertaining and interesting, and, and maybe that's his pathway. Maybe there are more contributions down the road for Philip Rivers. There's also the possibility that he's not done playing. The Colts have a quarterback problem. Carson Wentz is hurt, and it doesn't look good. And there are all kinds of rumors circulating that plan B right now is to call Phillip Rivers and get him out of retirement and bring him back. How interesting would that be? And what kind of shape is he in? What did he do this offseason? I have no clue. I can't answer any of these questions. I don't know. But could Phillip Rivers come back for one more year with the situation the Colts have? It's something to keep our eye on as football dominates and will begin to dominate the sports headlines and take over a lot of the programming here at KKHI because we know you love football and you know I love football and I can't wait for more. One other sports story on KKHI, and that is Carly Lloyd, the soccer player, for the United States women's national team. They beat Australia to win the bronze. That's disappointing, but Carly Lloyd is the best player. You know, the, the, as Trump says, the girl with the purple hair is the one everybody knows about, But Car who sits on the bench and comes in the game late. Carly Lloyd is the star of the team. She has set records, Olympic records or, or international records for goals scored. She is awesome. Carly Lloyd did the hardest thing because it's no longer hard. Look, it's not hard to be woke in sports. It's not hard to kneel anymore. It's not hard to do any of these things. You're just beloved by the media conservatives look the other way and just chalk you up as somebody who falls in line, you know, like a little minion. You're just, a, you're, just you're, you're walking the line, doing what you think you're supposed to do, and it's easy. It really is the easy thing to do now. It used to be protesting or standing for something was the hard thing to do. Well, no, it's the easy thing to do now. What Carly Lloyd did before the bronze medal game is the hard thing to do. So they've decided they're not going to do it during the anthem and all, you know, all this other stuff. They do a pregame thing, right? Or on the podium, I mean, because it's against the rules. So they're going to do this pregame. And so all these girls on this team have been kneeling pregame. They're playing Australia. The entire Australian team is in a line, you know, like almost like arms locked next to each other. They're standing pregame ceremony. They're not doing social justice. They're sorry. We're here to play soccer. We're not doing this. They're all standing. Everybody on the American team kind of spreads out across the pitch and they take a knee and Carly Lloyd is standing there at a tent, basically at attention, just standing there as tall and proud as she can be. The only member of the U S women's national team standing. She's looking straight at her competitors, the Australians, as if to say, I'm here to play soccer too. Looking at the entire team of them, not, not in a rude way, not in a mean way. She wasn't staring them down. She did the hard thing. She said, I'm not here for that. I'm here to play soccer and win this medal. And this right now in my life is more important than any issue going on back in America or any other country in the world. Carly Lloyd should be celebrated. You know how hard that is to do on a team, in a team sport, where everybody apparently has decided we're going to do what Megan wants us to do? And Carly Lloyd stood, and that was fantastic. She's just getting torched by libs in social media. I mean, she's just getting destroyed all over the place. Uh, I suspect she will be a hero in other circles and garner a lot of attention for being brave, tough, and strong, and, oh, I don't know, loving America? Because she's representing America on the women's soccer team? Good for her. She is all right in my books. So is bstock.net at 14680 South Flaming Road in Olathe. They've got a couple of great deals still this weekend on the Samsung TVs. 
The 75 incher is a thousand dollars cheaper, a thousand dollars cheaper than Best Buy. They also have a 65 inch uh, for around 500 bucks. It's a great deal at bstock.net. You save even more if you pick it up yourself at the warehouse, 14680 South Flaming Road. Back nine development, TJ Vilkanskis and his team build custom homes, commercial properties, and room additions. Check out their portfolio at back9development.com. They'd love to do a custom home for you or a commercial building or a room addition. Or if you want to tour the condominium Solheim at Grand Mirror, he'll give you a personal tour in Manhattan on the Colbert Hills Golf Course. Great investment properties. Prices are locked in right now. Building two is going to be more. Building two is about halfway done. Building one is almost done. And they should be available sometime in September. So check it out at back9development.com. Fry Orthodontics with 12, 12 locations for your convenience. The first appointment is always free. Guys, adults, ladies, get that perfect smile with Invisalign. Nobody knows you're wearing them. They straighten your teeth and give you a perfect smile with fewer appointments, less time missed, it's less painful, and it's better hygiene than braces. A lot of adults choose this. Right now, same price as braces at Fry Orthodontics. On fryorthodontics.com, your smile is just the start. And, of course, Ron Buck and his team at Buck Roofing. Ron Buck will give you a free roof estimate if you just call him up. 384-2680 is the number. Free uh, roof inspection, not estimate. Free roof inspection. And say, hey, you got a couple shingles out of place there. Bang, 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 bang. And they just fix them and they walk away and, ah, no charge. We got you covered up there. Just call us in five years. You got five years left on this roof. Give us a call. We'd love to do your roof in five years. That is Buck Roofing. You'll sleep well doing Buck Roofing. Fix the roof over your head. Well, it was a bad Thursday in the metro area. If you, if you looked at it like elections, if you just looked at commissions, boards, school boards, all the votes that took place, almost all of them took the easy way out. The media have won again. They ramped up their media campaign against COVID all summer long because they knew all these counties, all these school boards, everybody would be voting and trying to pass mandates for people to have kids wear masks and public spaces and mask mandates and all these things. They are losing all over the place with adults, but they've decided they can still control children, and so this is passing everywhere. School districts are lame. These school boards are lame. They're, they're passing this stuff right and left. Uh, Johnson County pulled up lame yesterday, 5 to 2. They're going to mask the 5 to 11-year-olds in every school in Johnson County, public and private. The Johnson County Commission voted on that. So it doesn't matter what school boards do. The kids have to wear masks because the county says so. The government's running your life. They're telling you how to uh, treat your children. There's going to be plenty of people keep their kids out of school. This is absurd. They have control. They have control because they follow the media. The media have control of this country. I, I hate to admit it. I hate to say it. The media are controlling this country. There's no question about it now. There's just no question. They... They cry wolf, they scream bloody murder over all this stuff, and everybody falls in line. It's one story after another. And this is the one where it's really worked for them. Like, they did the impeachment thing for a year and a half. You know, the Trump peed on a bed in Russia that Obama slept in. You know, all these fake stories, all this crap they came up with. They just beat the drum, beat the drum, beat the drum. Some people believed it, apparently, but people began to realize it's fake news. But people will not realize it's fake news with COVID. They won't do it. It seems too risky to not believe it. Even though we know people aren't really dying from this anymore, we have therapeutics. We know how to treat it. We know who's at risk. People over 75 are at risk. People under 75 that are obese are at risk. Get the vax. Take care of yourself. 99.8% of Americans will survive COVID if you are healthy and under 75. 99.8%. It's not going to get you. It has occurred to me watching all of this and watching how these boards are just afraid to go the opposite way of the media, which is really what's going on. They're afraid to be wrong. They're afraid, okay, what if the media is right? Well, let's just look at the numbers. You cannot stop sinus infections. You can't stop the cold. You can't stop the flu. We can't stop... Uh, coronaviruses. We've had coronaviruses forever. We've never stopped one of them. You don't stop them. You deal with them. You deal with them. It is obvious to me now this virus is not going away. They're going to keep going with different variants. It doesn't have to be COVID-19. 
They'll develop tests for some other coronavirus that's been around for 20 years and say, well, look at this one spreading around this year. They'll find something to get this to November of 22. They will. They know they have to. They know they want to. It's getting worse out there. We're drawing lines between people, but I think they know it's their only chance in 22 to keep the House, keep the Senator to win anything locally. I think just the opposite. I think local elections, if you go out and run on on individual freedoms, I think you're going to win. I think people don't want this. I don't, I don't think people want to be mandated. I think people want the option to wear a mask. I think if you're the 25% of the country that really is serious about this and you believe that even a paper mask is going to do some good and stop the virus, which is crazy, you're the same kind of people that think we can change the climate. All right, this virus is now just like climate change, global warming. To think as human beings that you can change the climate is absurd. I'm not a scientist, but I've said this a million times. Once upon a time, the whole thing was covered with lava, and then it was covered with ice. Ice carved the Grand Canyon, which is now desert, essentially. The hottest place in America was once frozen. We didn't do that. We did not do that. Okay? So we really can't control that. And I think the virus is the same way. And I think we have to, I think what, maybe what conservatives need to do is put out an understanding, look, this, we're not getting rid of the virus. It's never going away. We have therapeutics, we have a vaccine, and we've mitigated this for so many people. The news reports are so skewed. They talk about hospitalizations, children's hospitalizations. They don't say it's because of COVID-19. They say hospitals are filled with sick kids, and that's true because their immune systems are shot because they were locked down for a year. It's not COVID. It's it's really bad, but it's working for them, and they're continuing it. They're winning, and they just keep this thing going. And I I think we just have to have a lot of people step up and say, we're not getting rid of this virus. You don't eradicate it. It doesn't. It doesn't go away. It will, it will live somewhere, someplace from one person to another for a long, long time. We're not getting rid of it. It's not going away. Let's live our lives with it. But let's not be crazy. Let's not worry about putting masks on five-year-olds that don't get sick from COVID. Let's not wreck our kids' social development and maybe even their health by doing these things. Nobody's got the guts to stand up to this thing. It, it, to me, it's just like global warming. You, you, <laughs> to, th- to think as humans that we can eradicate the virus, that it's going to go away, is crazy. And I don't know why people aren't saying this. It's not about it going away. It was a new virus. It came along. We are now at a point where healthy people have a 99.8% chance of surviving it. That's good enough. Let's go live. I don't get it, man. I, I, don't, I don't get any of it. But there was one uh, board, Platt County has stepped up. In Missouri, they've stepped up and gone the other way. Their board uh, is now recommending masks and the vaccine, but that's it. Like, we'll recommend that you wear a mask if you, you know, we recommend it. Well, sure, who wouldn't recommend it? I recommend wearing a mask. I just don't wear one. Sorry, I'll recommend it. Yeah, you should, but I'm not going to. Uh, I recommend the vaccine for anybody that wants it, if it's if it's for you. The other unreported thing, we know this now, is is how many people have had COVID and have antibodies and immunity. I mean, the numbers are just staggering on how little harm this is doing. People are getting COVID because a huge number of people that had never had COVID got the vax, and they're getting it even though they've been vaccinated. But the vaccine apparently is effective in limiting um, how sick you become with the virus, which is also great news. I agree with the Stanford professor. We should be celebrating We should be celebrating we've done a great thing here in a year and a half. A great thing. But we shouldn't be running around like the world is coming to an end. It was bad. In March and April of 2020, it was bad. We didn't know how to deal with it. There were The the politics that were being played with uh, hydroxychloroquine and some of the things that doctors wanted to give patients were not allowed to happen because, oh, God, Trump thinks they should do that. We can't do that. You know, the media was, how many people did the media kill with that? by not allowing the therapeutics and convincing doctors all over the place, doctors, media convincing doctors, don't do this because Trump endorses it. Trump thinks hydroxychloroquine's okay. 
Don't give it to him. It, it's, a, it's a death sentence. He said put Clorox in you. You just go get some bleach and shoot it in your arm. What? It was so bad. How many people did the media kill? Because we wouldn't treat this with things that we already had that we knew worked against viruses very similar to this. Everybody knew it. And we ran from it because, oh, why? Because of politics? Huge mistakes have been made across the board. And we just continue to make them in the name of politics. It's disgusting. It really is. And at the same time, Moderna has come out. This is great. On the day that they announced they made a $4 billion quarterly profit, Moderna says, you need a third shot. Because if you need a third shot, they're going to make $4 billion more in the next quarter. We used to live in a time where people on both sides, left and right, were skeptical of big pharma, um, unapproved vaccines. Would you take this experimental thing? Essentially, would you ever be part of a trial if they said, there's this virus out there. We've got an experimental drug that's not approved by the FDA. Would you be part of a trial to take this vaccine? How many people would say, yeah, I'm going to go sign up for that? Well, that's essentially what 180 million Americans have already done. They've signed up for the biggest clinical trial in the history of mankind. It's not approved anywhere. They're trying to get it approved, but there's just too many things going on with the vaccine to really approve it at this point. So, I mean, we used to be skeptical of Moderna in these companies that, hey, that's all about the profits. I believe the hospitals are full right now because they're saying, sure, we got, we, we got room for them. We'll take them. What they were told in the beginning was, remember, for, for, for months, the hospitals were told, only take people that look like they're dying and get them in there and get them on a ventilator and try to save them. That's what they were told. And then we learned that the ventilators really weren't very good for them. And the, the mortality rate, once you got on a ventilator, it made it worse. Your blood would coagulate. Yeah, all kinds of different things happened. The ventilators didn't really help. We were wrong on that. But now we know. I think the hospitals are saying, yeah, you've got an underlying condition. What, what do you have? Oh, you know what? You're 30 pounds overweight. We probably ought to take you in the hospital for a couple of nights and just monitor you. And what do the hospitals do? They make money. They make lots of money. Again, I can't literally say nobody is dying with COVID. What I can say is the rate is ridiculously low, and it's at an all-time low. Mortality rate's at an all-time low, and we know this. At the same time, United Airlines is freaking out. They're going to, they're going to make it mandatory for every one of their 67,000 employees to get vaccinated. Now, I am a corporate skeptic. I love business. I believe in a corporation's uh, duty, in fact, to make a profit. But there are right ways and wrong ways to make profits, in my opinion. I think this is easy for United Airlines. I think United Airlines has 67,000 employees, and they're saying, you know what? If a couple thousand people walk away on their own, how much money does that save us? Instead of paying out of retirement or working with the union, maybe it's some older employees. We hire some younger people for less money. How good is this opportunity? Because they don't really... Look, United Airlines does not care about their workforce of 67,000. They're just numbers in a computer. Really, truly, there is no, you know, this isn't a mom and pop shop where you know the people you work with. I mean, you literally can be a, a flight attendant and, and get on flight after flight after flight for weeks and not know the pilots you're flying with. They're your coworkers, but you don't know them. And okay, oh, uh, maybe we flew together seven years ago. I, I mean, it's, it's just a weird business. And there's thousands and thousands of employees. United Airlines doesn't care that much about those employees. If they want to quit, they'll, they'll take that. It will save them money. They know that. Mandatory vaccination. So is it okay if United Airlines says it's mandatory if you're a woman, you're on the pill? Is that fair enough? We, we, don't, we don't want to have to pay the health insurance for you to have babies. We don't want to be part of that. I mean, it, I mean, Literally, what we're saying is that's legal. United Airlines could do that too. Oh, you can't work here unless you're on the pill, and we're going to test you. <laughs> Seriously, whose business is your health? You, maybe your spouse, your family, and your doctor. That's it. That's it. It's nobody else's business. And there goes United Airlines. How about Sharice Davids? The congresswoman from the 3rd District in Kansas, 
uh, not popular with me. Sharice Davids is the one who wore the T-shirt that says, All My Heroes Killed Colonizers. She is also the one that beat Amanda Atkins in November because Amanda Atkins would not run a negative campaign. Sharice Davids is a ripe candidate to have a negative campaign run against her. And the National Republican Congressional Committee is now pointing that out. It is a national story at Fox News that Sharice Davids is a massive supporter of critical race theory through a company called Haymarket Books, which describes itself on its own website as a radical book publisher in Chicago. It's a radical book publisher about critical race theory and American history and all kinds of things that nobody that votes for Sharice Davis agrees with. Again, not literally nobody, but like 90% of the people that voted for her wouldn't even agree with this stuff. She's a radical. She's a crazy radical. If you wear a t-shirt that says, all my heroes killed colonizers, you're a radical. And this time it appears that Amanda Atkins is going to fight back, which would really be nice of Amanda's sweet and she's smart and she's conservative and she'd be a great congresswoman for the third district in Kansas. But doggone it, the first time she ran, she didn't have a puncher's chance because she didn't punch. You got a punch. And the National Republican Congressional Committee has pointed out that Sharice Davis is a far left crazoid. They're getting national attention for that. So apparently there's going to be money pouring into this. And Amanda Atkins even put out a tweet and a statement about how radical left Sharice Davids is. Thank God. Somebody's gotten to Amanda Atkins, who's a wonderful candidate, would be a wonderful congressperson for all of us. She's not as probably as conservative as we'd like her to be, but she'd be just fine in District 3. And, and you can play the middle here. That, that's the point is, you know, she tried to play the middle and say, oh, I can get some conservative Democrats and I can get the Republicans and I can win this thing. No, you can play the middle if you merely point out that your opponent is nowhere near the middle and she's just sitting there. Sharice Davids is a radical. She wants, Sharice Davids wants so badly to be part of the squad but she can't do it because she really isn't in an urban district. She's in a mostly suburban district, and she knows if she's painted out like AOC, she would lose. Now, I said on the patron podcast yesterday, I talked a little bit about this and other things. I think Sharice Davids might be willing to come out of the closet now, pardon the pun, and say, look, I'm a far left liberal. I'm part of the squad. She might be willing to do that now because there's a lot more money for her after Congress, right? This would be four years in Congress for her. She can go to CNN. She can make money. There's, she can go on a speaking tour. She's a very unique. She checks so many boxes, right? She's uh, Native American, check. Far left liberal, check. Uh, gay, I believe, check. I mean, so many boxes. Military, check. All, all these things, she checks all these boxes. I mean, she's perfect for making millions after being in Congress. She knows that. It's almost like the faster she's out, the more money she can make and the better her life and her family's life will be, which of course makes her a fraud, but also a beautiful capitalist. <laughs> if she went to Congress for four years to be a capitalist pig and go make millions of dollars, good for her. Bad for the third district. That's all. Point her out for what she is. She may be willing to come out of the closet and say, I am with the squad. Maybe she'll just break with the squad. You know how famous she could be if she joined the squad? She should probably just join the squad, go ballistic right now, and lose her seat and become famous. If she joined the squad right now, she'd just be so famous. I don't know why she doesn't do it. There's so much money to be made. But get out of our lives. Just go, please go do it and get out of our lives because I'm not sure Amanda Atkins knows how to paint her as the far left crazoid she is. I'm hoping she does. It's now a national story that Sharice Davids is one of the farthest left on critical race theory, and she wants it in the schools in District 3 and in Kansas. So hopefully that will get pointed out. And we finish with a note of the absurd. You can't make these things up, but we see them every day anyway, right? Governor Andrew Cuomo, who's embattled right now, decided that it's too hot in the kitchen. We're not going to do news conferences. I don't want to be in the big city. He's hanging out at the governor's executive mansion where he works and lives and all these other things. There's a pool out back. You can't make this up. L listen, he's, he's working. It's middle of the day. He's got his notes out there and he's by the pool. He's in a lounge chair. He's got his feet kicked up, but he's working. I get it. Great. A lot of stress. 
perfect. I have no qualms with working like that. But in light of the fact that it's female employees, former female employees, charging over seven years, 11 of them, that he was inappropriate at work with female staffers, should his secretary be seated next to him at his feet on the ground in a summer romper, barefoot, hanging out right next to the governor. And there are photos of this. I don't know if they're drone photos. I don't know who got them. It's the worst look ever. It is the worst look ever. Is the man married? Do we even know? I don't even know about Quan. I'm like, what's, what's his personal story here now? He's got all these women. The, the secretary is not some absolute bombshell. But you would look at them as a couple in this picture and go, well, she's more attractive than he is. She would. And say, they don't match. It's like me and my wife. People see us all the time like, well, that's not a matching pair. It's true. I'm not ashamed or embarrassed to say it. It's just true. So there's Cuomo sitting poolside, and he's got, like, lounge clothes on. He doesn't have, like, a bathing suit on. He's working. He's comfortable. But she's in a romper, you know, short, shorty thing, Bare skin everywhere up top, the whole deal. is That's what it's called a romper, right? Summer romper is what she's wearing, and she's barefoot. Working at the feet of the governor, as he's got his feet up on his little footstool, she's on the chair next to him, sitting, facing him, kind of crisscross applesauce, can't say Indian style, crisscross applesauce at the foot of a, a lounge chair, and her laptop's on the chair. And she's looking, it's just, it's just the weirdest picture ever. Andrew Cuomo, after all this, hanging out with his secretary at the pool. Oh, my. That's just the way it works right there. Just the way it works. A lot of new patrons this week. Really appreciate it. We put up a good patron podcast yesterday. We may do another one on Friday. We'll definitely have the newsletter on Saturday. So a lot of good stuff going on with the patron program at KKHI. There's going to be more and more football there. I want to remind you that we will have a free Football betting tips from Lee Sterling on the patron program again this year. So that's always fun. The people, it's a it's a free Thursday pick for Thursday night football. And Lee Sterling had a whopping winning record on those picks last year. So a lot of patrons made some money on Thursday night football with a free pick. You don't have to subscribe to his service. Just join the patron program and you'll get that every Thursday as well. If you'd like to sign up, it's kkhasissues.com. Just go straight on your browser to the website, kkhasissues.com, and click become a patron. And for as little as five dollars a month or more, you're in for all of the patron programming. And as I mentioned, we put up a new patron podcast yesterday and we appreciate all the new folks that have signed up. We've had a good run the last three weeks. A lot of you signing up. I think you're gearing up, getting ready for football. You like this content. I think a lot of you liked my, 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 uh, tit for tat with mayor Quentin Lucas. We seem to have gained more followers and listeners in the last couple of weeks. It's really growing. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate you spreading the word. If you just tell people about it, you can listen free every day. I'm doing it every day for free. I'd appreciate it if you hit the follow or like button wherever you listen or give us a rating. Some of these sites have services where you can rate the podcast. The higher the rating, the better it's in rotation and search engines and things like that. So I'd love a positive rating. If you wanted to give us one of those, that would be really cool as well. But mostly wherever you go, just remind everybody, Kevin Keatsman has issues. Thanks for listening to Kevin Keatsman Has Issues, presented by Roberts Robinson Chevrolet Buick GMC. To get exclusive patrons-only podcasts, receive a weekly newsletter, and attend in-person patrons-only parties, visit kkhasissues.com and become a patron today. This has been a production of Crooked Tail Media Incorporated. Ah!